What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install Android 9 on your Raspberry Pi 4. Well, this is actually Lineage OS 16.0. This is an unofficial build by Constakang, so don't expect updates from the Lineage team. And before we get started, I do wanna mention that this is not for everyday use. This is pretty much strictly for testing. But overall, I've had a pretty decent experience with it. It's using the Google Swift shader driver for the GPU, so things aren't as smooth as they should be. But if you wanna fiddle around with it, I'm gonna show you how to install Android and Google Play because this does not come pre-installed with Google Play. But we'll also get that up and running in this tutorial. So I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model with an ice tower cooler and overclocked to two gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. I'm not really sure how well the GPU overclock is helping out because it's using that Swift shader driver. And I really recommend overclocking at least the CPU on your Raspberry Pi if you wanna run this image. I have a full tutorial, I'll link it in the description. When overclocking your Pi, you really don't need the Ice Tower cooler. One of the smaller dual fan coolers from Amazon will work just fine. I've been running this on a 4 gigabyte model, overclocked to 2 gigahertz for a couple weeks now with no issues. These are around 12 bucks. I'll link them in the description. I do recommend at least a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model to run Android on, but the 4 gigabyte is going to be your best bet. So in order to get this up and running, you're going to need a micro SD card. I do recommend a higher quality card like a SanDisk or even the Silicon Power cards. They're pretty good and I've pretty much switched over to the Silicon Power because of the price on Amazon. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card in the one that's running right now and it works just fine. You're also obviously going to need a micro HDMI cable and your USB Type-C to power the Pi up. In order to flash the Android image to your SD card, you will need another PC. I'm gonna be using Windows, but this will also work with Linux or Mac. And we're gonna be installing Google Play completely on the Pi, so we won't need to resort to our PC. But I do wanna give a big shout out to a YouTuber who goes by the name PC Mac for making this tutorial in the first place. I tried myself to get Google Play up and running with the methods I know, but I resorted to using his tutorial and it works amazingly. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to my Windows PC so we can get this Android image flashed to the SD card. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is flash the Android image to an SD card so we can run it on the Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to install Google Play completely on the Pi itself while it's running this version of Android. I have a micro SD card inserted into my PC. This is just a cheaper 32 gigabyte card, but even an 8 gig will work. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description. First up, we need to grab the Android image, Lineage OS 16.0, Android 9. Remember, this is an unofficial build. We're going to head over to constakang.com. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to download it. It's going to take us over to Android file host. Start the download. So we're now downloading the image. Next thing we need to do is get an app to allow us to flash this image to an SD card. We're going to be using Etcher for this. Works on Mac, Windows, or Linux. From the drop down here, Linux, Mac, Windows. I'm on Windows. I'm going to grab the portable version. Once my image is finished downloading, I'm going to place it on my desktop for easy access. So I now have the Lineage OS image downloaded. I've placed it on my desktop and I also have Etcher. We're going to start up Etcher. From within Etcher, we're going to select Image, head to our desktop, Lineage 16. The number on the end here or the date might be a little different because it might be updated in the future. We're just going to select the image we downloaded, select our target, make sure you choose the correct device. Like I mentioned, I got a little 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Click Continue and Flash. Etcher is going to go ahead and take care of everything. It's going to flash that image to our SD card so we can run Android on our Raspberry Pi. Give this a little time to finish up. So when Etcher is finished flashing the SD card, you might get a few warnings like this. Just go ahead and close out of them. We can now close Etcher. Now all we need to do is take the SD card from our PC, place it in our Pi, plug everything in, and boot it up. We're gonna have Lineage OS 16 installed on our Pi, but we do not have access to Google Play or GAP. So I'm gonna walk you through installing GAPs all on the Pi itself. So here we are. I've placed the SD card in the Pi. I also have a keyboard and mouse. By the way, touch functionality does work over USB with the Raspberry Pi 4 and this version of Android. If you're using a monitor, that supports touch. So I'll just go ahead and plug in power. We'll get a little red LED, and after a little bit, it'll start flashing green. When you see the rainbow splash screen and then the Lineage OS intro screen, you know you're good to go.
So now we're basically just going to set it up like we would any other Android device. We'll click next here. Unfortunately, it doesn't come pre-installed with gaps. I do have that video coming up. So you won't have to sign into any play services the first time you boot this up. But you will have to set the time and date and connect to Wi-Fi if you're not using Ethernet. So we're all set up, running on the Raspberry Pi 4, but you might notice we don't have Google Play installed. I'm going to walk you through it right now. Unfortunately, I tried to do this over my game capture to make it a little cleaner, but it just wouldn't come out right, so I will have to film the screen while we do this. So first things first, you will need to be connected online in order to do this because there are two things we need to download from the built-in browser. First one being... GAPS or G apps. We're going to download the Pico version, and this is going to include Google Play and all the services we need to get it up and running. And we're going to install Device ID APK. Now, in order to get this up and running in Google Play, you will have to register this under your email. It's just kind of like a development registration, and it's pretty easy to do. All links for everything will be in the description. We're going to open up the browser and we're going to head over to Open GAPS. That way, we can download the Pico version that includes Google Play. We need to make sure we're downloading the correct version of GAP, so we're going to choose ARM, Android 9, and Pico. We'll just click this little download icon here. You might have to allow the browser access to download files, so we'll click download. And if you want to check the status, up in the top left hand corner, you can kind of swipe down and just make sure it's downloading. So while that finishes up, I'm going to go ahead and download device ID. This is the device ID APK. We can get it from APK Mirror. The version I'm going to be using is 1.32, but 1.30 also works. We need to find the download button. Download APK. Again, you'll get the download prompt, so click download. And if you want to check the progress on this, up in the top left hand corner, you can swipe down. So now we need to enable developer options so we can get root access and local terminal. We're going to head over to the settings menu. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to about tablet. From here, we're going to click on build number four or five times. It'll prompt you. We now have developer options enabled. We'll back up, go to system, advanced, and all the way down, we'll see developer options. From within this menu, we need to find root access. We're going to allow apps and ADB. Make sure this is checked. Now we need to find local terminal. And we'll turn this on. We can now back out of the settings. And I recommend moving the GAPS package that we downloaded to the root of your storage. So you can open up files, go to your download section, and we're going to take that GAPS package and just drag it right to where it says Raspberry Pi. This is just going to make it easier to find when we're in recovery. So we're now all prepared to install Google Play, but we do need to reboot the system one time to enable that local terminal. So from your keyboard, if you hold F5, it'll bring up the power menu and just click restart. So now that we've restarted the system, we're going to go into our apps menu and launch terminal. It's probably going to prompt you to allow access to some storage. So we'll just click allow here. And from our keyboard, we're going to type in SU for super user. Press enter. It's going to prompt you again. I'm just going to remember this decision and click allow. Now we need to type in rpi4 recovery.sh and press enter. And finally, reboot. Press enter and your system will automatically reboot into recovery. So to some custom Android users, this might look really familiar because this is TWRP for the Raspberry Pi. We're going to swipe to allow modifications. And from the main menu, we're going to go to install and find that GAPS package that we downloaded. This is the Pico version for ARM Android 9. Swipe to install. Give it a little time to finish up. It's going to install GAPS for us.
When this is finished installing, we also need to wipe the Delvic cache. So we'll click Wipe Delvic and we're going to swipe to allow. Now it's time to back up to the main menu. We can use the bottom buttons here or just click on the TWRP icon. From the main menu, we're going to go to Wipe and we're going to reset the device. So Wipe, Swipe to Factory Reset. We're going to click Back. From here, we'll go to Mount. Make sure Boot, System, and Data is checked. We'll back up, Advanced, Terminal, and now we need to reboot the system from Terminal, but we're going to set it to normally boot into Android instead of recovery every time. And to do that, we're just going to type in rpi4 recovery.sh boot. Press Enter. And all we need to do now is type in reboot and press Enter. The system's going to reboot into Android for us and we'll have Google Play installed. But we can't use it just yet. That's why we downloaded the device ID APK. We're going to get a code from that. And we can tell Google that we want to use Google Play on this device kind of as a development platform. So once we get in Android, I'll show you what to do. So this time around, when you boot it up, it might look a little different. You'll just have to set it up like you would any other Android phone or tablet. I'm just going to go through the motions here. I'm not going to set up a protective pin or anything like that. I just want to get into Android so we can get Google Play up and running. All right, so you see we have a Google Play right on the desktop here. But if we try to access it, it's just going to tell us that it's not Play protected and we can't access Google Play. So we're going to head over to our file section and we're going to find that device ID APK that we downloaded and go ahead and install it now. So once this is installed, we're going to open it up and click on Google Service Framework. This is going to give us a code. We're going to click copy. You might notice we've had a warning hanging over our heads here. We're going to click on it. It's going to tell us that our device is not Play Protect certified. So we're going to go down to the bottom here where it says custom ROM users and click on this link. It's going to open up the browser for us. We're going to sign in with a Gmail account. Once we're signed in, it'll bring us to the overview screen. And we're going to paste the code we copied from the device ID APK. You can paste it by pressing Control V on your keyboard. Click register. Give it a few seconds. It'll register this device as a custom ROM and allow you to use Google Play. Now it's time to reboot the system one last time, and I do recommend waiting about five minutes before you start to access Google Play, just to make sure everything went through on Google's end. If you receive the warning again that your device is not Google certified, just wait on it. Give it five to ten minutes, and it will go through. I'm just going to start up Google Play. I'm going to sign in with my Gmail account, just like I would with any new Android phone or tablet. And once I'm signed in, I can access Google Play from the Raspberry Pi 4 running Lineage OS 16. So there we have it. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to go ahead and download a quick application. We'll do IDA 64 just to show you everything's working here. It's going to go ahead and download and install from the Google Play Store, and I can open it up. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, all links are in the description. Keep in mind, this is still very early for Android on the Raspberry Pi. But if you're interested in playing around with it, you now have it installed on your Pi 4 and you have access to Google Play. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Raspberry Pi 4, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.